Welcome back to Hila Live. Now, of course, Saturday is the big one. It's the chase for a fourth William Webb Ellis Cup. Both the Springboks and the All Blacks currently are tied at three apiece heading into Saturday's 2023 Rugby World Cup final. And we decided to, on the show to bring in a former a World Cup winner. Somebody, of course, was part of that 1995 team that played the All Blacks at the iconic Ellis Park. It's none other than Henny LaRue. Henny, thank you so much for joining us. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much, Ross. Thank you. No, uh, it's a pleasure. Henny, let's talk about, obviously, first the, the, the squad announcement. Uh, Faf de Klerk, Henry Pollard, in that halfback pairing. Of course, we've been seeing in the last two knockout games, uh, Kobus Reinach and Mani Libok. Is this down to a necessity for experience, especially coming up against what is a very good halfback pairing of Richie Moanga and Aaron Smith for the All Blacks? Uh, I would I would assume it's that yes, but it it is a gamble nonetheless. You know, you're sitting with uh, a, a bench split of seven one, which is a gamble of significant proportions. Uh, if we find a problem at 9 or 10, which are key pivotal roles. And there's a lot of nuance in those two positions. You can cover most positions reasonably, reasonably well, but those two positions are key to, to a, a final, in particular in how they would uh, uh, you know, enable the game to flow. So um, it, we, we're just holding thumbs that... In this instance, nine and ten can can go through the entire game uh, for, for South Africa. I want to touch on that seven-one split. It didn't work against Ireland um, uh, for various reasons, of course. I mean, the eleven points that were on offer, uh, which were kickable, did not obviously go according to plan. Um, is there a risk about that seven-one split, or is there, of course, a method to what Jacques and Russia are doing in terms of it's going to be a wet outfield? and maybe playing a second pack may work in their favour? Well, if the outfield is going to be wet, then you've done a little bit more homework than I have up to date. But it definitely have uh, played a part in, in having Reinach within in the squad as well. Uh, to have a left-footed scrum, scrum half, uh, you know, it's good to be able to offset him with a right-footed scrum half the ability to adjust play around the sides of the scrum using a left and right footed kicker, whether it be scrum off or fly I think uh, does bring a different dynamic to the play. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm even more concerned if it's, if it's going to be uh, very, very wet. Henny, let's talk about how this World Cup has been for uh, the Springboks. I mean, that blip against Ireland, of course, but... They really did and were made to sweat in those games against France and England, respectively. Uh, what's your take on their World Cup so far? Uh, of course, heading into that final. Uh, when you look at previous World Cup winning campaigns, especially the one that you were involved in in 95, um, are you convinced about the way they've played? Or is there a sense of element that they can grind out the result? And they've done so, obviously, in these past two games. Yes, you know, I don't, I don't think we would be overly joyed and overly confident. I do think South Africa have had a very tough run-up to, to this final. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about potential fatigue um, in terms of this preparation, and, and I hope the coaching staff has taken that into consideration during, during this week. Uh, and, and added a lot of rest because it has been an enormous task to, to, to get to the final, and it's been extremely tough. So from that perspective, we, we're hoping that the players will be energised on Saturday and, and, and be able to play the full 80 minutes at the full potential that, that they have. Eddie, you know Rusty Rasmus quite well. Um, how, in terms of structure, you know, obviously he was the head coach from that 2018 to obviously the end of 2019. And then he brings in Jacques Ninaba. Of course, he worked quite well, not just in Ireland, but obviously within the uh, South African rugby structures. Um, the structure that he has brought, uh, what's your take on it? Do you feel that he has brought a necessity of a structure within South African rugby compared to what we, of course, seen 
uh, with his predecessors in Alistair Kutia and before him, Heineken Mayer? Yes, I think, you know, Rossi is someone that doesn't mind uh, taking the, the odd chance mm. and he does so with the interests of broadening, broadening the pool. So he has brought a different dynamic to the traditional way of, of how, let's call it, the traditional coaches used to play their, their players and choose their players. So there's been a change in the, in the nature of the play and there's also been uh, a difference in, in the nature of, of, of how he chooses teams. The rules and regulations have changed over the last uh, you know, 10, 15 years. And I do think he's trying to adapt and use those rules to his benefit. Henny, I want to talk about the All Blacks because when they started the competition, that defeat to France, I mean, there was one point where Ian Foster was being uh, talked about as <laughs> maybe even letting him go during the tournament and bringing in Scotty Robertson as a, who's going to be their future uh, head coach as some sort of an emergency plan. He's overcome all of that. And we've seen the All Blacks even becoming a much more effective team, none so less than what we saw against Argentina in that semifinal. Yes, indeed. You know, um, the, the All Blacks, you can never underestimate them. And they like the Springboks. Once they've been, um, you know, beaten, they're like a wounded bull. So you've got to be very, very careful. They've had a, an easier ride through, in my opinion, to, to the final. So I think they're going to really be raring to go. It, it's an issue where, where, where they are going to have to try and understand and adjust their play in terms of South African strengths. They know now that we, the way we have chosen the team, what the intent is. So it's going to be interesting to see how they counter the measures given the teams that, that Rossi or the team that Rossi has put out. Henny, I want to talk 1995 because, I mean, whenever we speak 95, there is such an iconic moment within South African sports. You know, one year into democracy, you started at centre on that day. When leading up to that final, you know, mentally and physically, how, how did you have to prepare yourself knowing that it wasn't just the country's first ever World Cup final in any sports, but it was also a World Cup final that meant a lot for the nation and for the sport itself. Talk to us through that, just that week of preparation leading up to what was such an iconic day in June in 1995 at Ellis Park. Yeah, look, I mean, that last week, you know, you, you can't do anything more regarding fitness because you aren't going to get fit in a week. You can't do any great strengthening uh, improvements within the side individually. So each of you have trained and have got to that point where you are physically at your peak. So the week build up before the final is, is merely adjustments, tweaking here and there, understanding combinations, fine tuning little things that uh, in communication, uh, the, the team concept and so forth. So you know there's very little one can do. And I think the most important element that that you need to ensure is that you don't let the the occasion drain your energy because there's a lot of anxiety there's a lot of strength there's stress there's a lot of concern and you've got to almost take yourself out of that otherwise you end up on a saturday uh, feeling very very drained so you have to you have to psychologically remove you out of the yourself out of those those periods and and relieve it. when you when it's not game orientated, you need to relax and you need to spend a lot of time resting. Any one final question: Where is this match going to be won or lost? And I'm going to ask you a winner from you. Look, I think uh, both sides are, are, are very very evenly matched. It's going to to me depend. It's the winning of a loose ball. It's the decision of a referee. It's the great play of a Colby or, you know, a particular player that's going to swing this game. It's going to go down to the wire. It's going to be an epic, epic final. Uh, can I get a winner from you there, Henny? Sorry? Uh, yes, can you I, can. Yeah, you can. yeah. I, I, uh, I'm going to have to go with the Springboks 26-23. Ah, that'll be an epic game. I mean, we've seen, of course, close finishers, but that'll be as... Now, another epic way to end the final. Henny, thank you so much for making time for us. Much appreciated. 
Absolute pleasure. Thank you. That's uh, Henny LaRue, of course. 1995 Rugby World Cup winner and a uh, former Springbok center. Uh, I mean, you heard it from the man himself. He played when it was the Madiba Magic, of course, in 1995 when Joel Stransky kicked that uh, drop goal and sent everyone in that stadium and all, you know, 45 million South Africans at that time into a state of frenzy. What a day it was. When we talk Springboks and All Blacks, you know you're getting just one of the most iconic, if not the most iconic rivalry in world rugby. After the break, I'll have your latest in news. Do stay tuned.